Tabuli News, Prime Minister Manasse Sobavare and delegation returns from overseas engagement. Sinu suspends five staff for alleged involvement in fraudulent activities. And Prime Minister happy with bilateral talks with Saudi Arabia. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Ossifello. Prime Minister Manasse Sogavare and his delegation have arrived back in the country following their engagement overseas for the past two weeks. The delegation left last month first to attend the Korea Pacific Leaders Summit on the 29th of May before visiting Saudi Arabia. The Prime Minister was joined by a government delegation consisting of ministers and senior officials from the Ministry of Planning, Finance, Tourism, Mines, Energy and the Ministry of Environment and his overseas engagement. Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavare says the trip to Saudi Arabia was successful and that the country can learn a lot from Saudi Arabia's development programs. In Saudi Arabia, the Prime Minister-led delegation had discussions in the sectors of tourism, energy, minerals and mines, health, education, climate action, sports development and areas of finance for development partnership and short-term technical assistance. Through the visit, we now have a much better understanding of the financing avenues that can be accessed through the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. These uh, fundings, uh, funding arrangements comprise of uh, grant-based funding and concessional loans through the Saudi Fund for Development. Uh, we will undertake in-depth assessment of our transformative priorities that uh, we can channel through these funding sources. By way of immediate benefits, Saudi Arabia confirmed an initial grant of 7 million US dollars, uh, approximately 58 million Solomon dollars, to support the uh, government's efforts to host the 2023 uh, Pacific Games. Five staff of the Solomon Islands National University have been suspended for allegations of fraud. Vice-Chancellor Professor Transform Angarao took a decisive decision to suspend the five staff. That includes very senior staff members of the university. Georgina Kekea tells us more. Two of the five suspended staff are top academics at the National University. Vice-Chancellor Professor Angorao in a statement says evidence suggests the staff are involved in fraudulent printing activities with a company called Wakaman Inc. However, it was alleged that the company was established purposely to swindle money from Sinu by overpricing their goods and services. A top academic from Sinu was allegedly involved in the swift payment of goods and services and that payment for Wakaman never went through the formal financial processes of the National University. It was also alleged that procurement processes involving Wakaman Inc. were fake. Irregularities and financial discrepancies related to printing services provided by Wakaman Inc. were the reasons for the investigation. Professor Angorao says the company does not own a printing machine and Sinu took the allegations of fraud seriously. The investigation conducted over the past six months by the National Crime Unit and Janus Task Force suggests that the suspended staff members were involved in the fraudulent printing activities. The suspended staff members will be given the opportunity to present the side of the story before any final disciplinary action. The final internal audit will also be the deciding factor for the five suspended staff. Two of the suspended staff are top academics with high standing in the community, while the other three are senior staff members of the university. Professor Angorao says the suspension of the staff members underscores seniors commitment to maintaining the highest standards of professionalism and ethics within its organization. Gina Kikea, Tabuli News.
from the Korea Pacific Leaders Summit, the press secretariat of the Office of the Prime Minister reported that the government has reservations about certain elements of the Korea Pacific Declaration. On the 29th of May, the Sogovare-led delegation participated in the Korea Pacific Summit in Seoul, a first of its kind. A partnership agreement was established between South Korea and members of the Pacific Islands Forum from the summit. However, it was reported that the government was not quite pleased with a few elements of that declaration. Exactly, um, the Solomon Islands is very, very seriously concerned about this solidarity. And this is what we are talking about. If you want solidarity in the region, in the, in the Pacific, among the Pacific nations, then listen to the concerns of all countries and uh, uh, facilitate that. Uh, and so that's in terms of our relationship with the Pacific, uh, Pacific regions. And I'm beginning to question a lot of things that the forum is doing. Um, and uh, if you see those very big announcements that are made by our friends, uh, it is either in Fiji, in Samoa, in Papua New Guinea. We are a sovereign nation. And these people want to help us. They, they, they establish these things that they promised in this country, not uh, uh, in selected countries. And they're hoping that we will benefit out of those things. This is the geopolitics in, in play, and we are very, very sensitive about it. But Parliament briefly met this Wednesday morning before adjourning again for Monday next week. Parliament was adjourned last month because of the Prime Minister's overseas engagement. The Prime Minister and his delegation have now arrived back in the country this Wednesday afternoon. The mobile money app launched recently by Our Telecom is hoped to capture and provide financial services to the vast majority of Solomon Islanders in the rural communities. Georgina Kike reports. Only 20% of Solomon Islanders have access to financial services. The statistics presented in the financial inclusion strategy clearly illustrates the urgent need for accessible and affordable financial services in our country. Therefore, the mobile money has the transformative power to address these challenges by providing innovative solutions and improving access points and also reducing costs. As we embark on this new chapter, I'm calling on the banks, all the banks, to be cooperative when it comes to opening up of extra accounts for genuine investors in the mobile money space. Let us work collaboratively to ensure that every resident and citizen in this country, regardless of their location or socioeconomic status, can benefit from the opportunities offered by the mobile money or by fintech companies for that matter and build a brighter and more inclusive future for all of us. The mobile money service launched this week will allow users to access basic financial services such as sending money at any given time, anywhere, using MCLN. The development of mobile money in the Solomon Islands has been a collaborative effort between our telecom and our partners. We have worked closely with international organizations and local stakeholders to ensure that our mobile money service meets the needs of the Solomon Islands market. Our goal has been to create a solution that is secure, convenient, and accessible to everyone, regardless of their location or income. This service will be accessible both through the MCLN apps and the USSD platform, meaning even without data, you can still get, it, get to transact with your feature button phone. As we launch this service, I want to assure our customers that we are committed to constantly innovating and developing new solutions that are tailored to the unique challenges of our country. The MCLN financial system is supported by the Australian government and UNCDF. We know that only 25% of Solomon Islanders have a formal bank account. In provinces, even for those with a bank account, 
the access of that bank account can be difficult. Travelling long distances, sometimes on tough roads and seas to withdraw cash which they need. For people with small businesses or ideas, it is hard to buy goods to grow or to sell into domestic markets because of these basic challenges. That is why MCLN is so important. Now anyone with an Our Telecom SIM will be able to accept and make payments without having to travel to a bank. It is about financial inclusion, it is about economic empowerment, and it is about building the Solomon Islands. For the cocoa farmers outside Kirikira, who the High Commissioner will be meeting today, MCLN means they can potentially receive payments for pre-orders, procure new equipment, pay staff and contractors, or simply buy food for their family and pay school fees for their children all without having to leave the village to find banking services. This is why it is transformational. And this is why Australia has been so proud to fund UNCDF and Our Telecom to make it happen. Our Telecom is now opening its doors for Solomon Islanders wishing to register with the MCLN financial service system. Most of the provincial branches of the company have simultaneously launched the financial service system with the head office in Honiara this week. Gina Kekea, Tavuli News. And that's our local news. Coming up next is Tavuli Sports. Welcome back in sports. This month of June, karate athletes are looking forward to two overseas trips. Sinner's performance manager for Portfolio One Combat and Weight Sports, Moses Aonama Jr. said this is very timely, especially for these athletes. Um, karate men go for participate in World Force Union Championship for Karate in New Zealand, but I have stopped my role was uh, for training camp one week preparation before I was able to go in uh, at the level of competition. So, um, everything uh, before we collect this time, hopefully uh, by 2018, we should depart for going to represent the country to this notion of championship. A basketball talent identification open selection trials are ready to kick off this Friday. The trials is to be held by the Solomon Islands Basketball Federation, purposely to scout for more potential athletes to be selected to the national squad. In the Bota Garden Talent ID open trials for both women, men and women, uh, this is 303 and 515. Uh, this one, um, FIBA and Solomon Islands Basketball Federation, uh, this one plan agreement to follow, uh, agree for dream, to move forward for helping program. So we follow this with them for supporting, helping them out with them on testing, whatever data we need in, conference room, facility and code and some equipment too. And then potentially after trials about the dream camp. So other coaches and other mental coaches and federation have identified who are the item from trials. And then I think they're looking at 20 female, 20 male who come camp next week and next week year series. The women's under-19 team is now counting down preparations for the OFC Under-19 Women's Championship 2023 in six days' time. Last week, the under-19 had a friendly test match with the national team, which was an opportunity to put all their training to work, building the momentum to compete and represent at the national level. The youth squad will be joined by host Fiji, defending champions New Zealand, Vanuatu, Tonga, Cook Islands, New Caledonia, Samoa and Papua New Guinea. And finally now in Tavuli Sports, boxers from the Fiji Royal Military Army have started arriving in the country ahead of the first ever Pacific Boxing Challenge Series to be held in Honiara on Wednesday and Thursday next week. The Boxing Bouts is a collaboration between Boxing Solomon Islands and the Solomon Islands Boxing Association. Lieutenant Colonel Aseli Tsuanakewe of Fiji Forces in Honiara says they are happy to support the boxers in their preparation for the Pacific Games. Uh, and to be part of this uh, program is just 
it is part of what why we're here. So we are not only here for peace and stability. Uh, we are here to maximize the opportunity there is, the potential that is here. Especially, we are all sports-loving nation. We are from the Pacific. We love our sports. Uh, some of my boys are competing in the local rugby competition. Uh, fortunately, I have uh, someone here who has participated in amateur boxing as well back home. Uh, so why not? Why not give into boxing as well? And that's sports wrapping up our Tavoli News Bulletin. I'm Lisa Osifello. Thanks for joining us.